and welcome to this video. Today I'll be discussing color wheels and what the primary colors are. Some say they are red, yellow, and blue. Others say they are magenta, yellow, and cyan. However, it turns out both are wrong. In order to understand why, we first need to understand the color wheel. So let's quickly go over the basics of the color wheel. The color wheel is made up of three primary colors. Those are colors that can't be made from other colors and make all the other colors. Next, we have secondary colors, which are made by mixing together two primary colors. Then we have tertiary colors, which are a combination of a primary and neighboring secondary color. And in the middle, we have black, which is a combination of all three primaries. Complementary colors are colors that are across from each other on the color wheel. Mixing complementary colors will result in all three primary colors being combined, which can thus result in black. And also, depending on the amounts mixed, in the darkening or dulling of a color. While not part of the wheel, it's also helpful to know what shades, tones, and tints are. Tints are when white is added to a color, lightening it. Shades are when black is added to a color, darkening it. And tones are when both white and black are added to a color, dulling it. Now, let's get to discussing what the primaries are. The most common ones taught in basically every school are red, blue, and yellow, which are then mixed to make the secondary colors orange, green, and purple. I made a color wheel using acrylic paint and another with colored pencils. And looking at them, they don't look right. The most obvious being the purple. It doesn't look very purple. In fact, it almost looks black. And the red purple looks more like a dark red, while the blue purple, or violet, looks more like a dark blue. If you add white to the paint purples, you will get some slightly more purplish looking colors, but they are very dull. Some are even gray. Another problem is you can't make magenta, no matter how much you try. Another set of primaries used by printers and an increasing number of artists has the primary colors as cyan, magenta, and yellow, with the secondary colors as red, green, and blue. When I made those color wheels, red turned out to be a secondary color, but the blue was not very blue and the black was grayish. Neither color wheel was quite right, and I was stumped. Then one day, a couple years ago, I was sitting around in the sunshine, doing absolutely nothing, when I noticed how my watch was sparkling in the sun. Upon closer inspection, I realized the sparkles were in three different colors. I recognized magenta, yellow, and realized the third color must be cyan. I looked at lots of other objects in the sun, and regardless of the object's colors, each had sparkles of the same three colors, the three primary colors. I managed to take some photos, though the sparkles look much clearer when observed in life than the photos were able to capture. And looking at the colors, the cyan was quite darker than the color associated with primary cyan. Taking this information, I picked out a darker cyan and made some more color wheels. This time, I got a decent blue, and the gray was much closer to black. However, there were still problems. The first being that, as much as I tried, I could not get a bright blue. I thought that was simply because my cyan was off. The cyan sparkles looked bluer than the cyan I was using, but I didn't have anything bluer except my blues, and the cyan couldn't be blue, because according to CMY color theory, blue is supposed to be a secondary color. Another problem was the cyan I was using could be made by mixing blue and yellow, which meant it wasn't a primary. I also assumed that was because my cyan was off. But the biggest problem of all was that complementary colors should be able to make black when mixed, yet blue and yellow make green. There was just no getting around that. Blue and yellow could not be complementary colors. On the other hand, mixing red and blue made a pretty decent almost black, and red was a complementary color to cyan, Looking even closer at the sparkles, they did look pretty bluish. Thus, it seemed like blue really was one of the primaries after all. So, after all those years of puzzling over what the true primaries are, all those hours of mixing colors and making way too many color wheels, it turns out the true primaries are magenta, blue, and yellow, and the secondary colors are red, green, and purple. Here's some color wheels I made using those primaries. An interesting thing to note is that while blue and red are complementaries that make black and gray, Mixing red and green will also make these in black and gray. I'm pretty sure this is because they are both secondaries, and thus all three primaries are combined when mixed. Purple and green will also make a decent black and gray color, and following that logic, red and purple should also be able to make black and gray. When you mix the two, you will get darker reds and purples and a color that's pretty close to black, but I wasn't able to get any decent grays, just dull light purples. I'm not sure why. Perhaps the magenta or purple is quite strong, or the white likes to bring it out. I don't know, it's quite perplexing. But moving on, a lot of people may be wondering why all of this even matters. Just use whatever colors you want. 
While that's true, you can use whatever colors you want, and as many or little as you want, knowing what the true primers are is important for several reasons. The first reason is that they're crucial for understanding how to mix different colors. When you know what the true primers are, and also how the color wheel works, you'll know how to make the colors you want. You'll also understand why certain colors are dull, and how to keep them from getting too dull, or how to make them dull or dark. It gives you control over your color mixing. Not only that, but if you're using lots of different colors that may not even include the primaries, knowing the true primaries will help you understand how those different colors were made and thus better know how to combine them to get the colors you need. Another reason is that quality art supplies make a difference, but they can also be quite expensive. So knowing the least amount of colors needed to make the most amount of colors is very useful. Using the right primaries, along with basic black and white, allows you to make almost any color imaginable, from calm, dull colors, to vibrant, bright colors, to soft, pastel ones, to rich, dark ones, and everything in between. Not only that, but it can also be useful for someone who wants to try their hand at a new medium, but doesn't want to invest a bunch of money buying lots of different colors, especially if they might end up not even liking the new medium. Another reason is color harmony. Using the wrong primaries excludes certain colors and misaligns the colors of the color wheel. Maybe it's just me, but I personally think a lot of the blue, magenta, and yellow harmonies look nicer together. Now that we've discussed the correct primaries and why they're important, let's get to paints and pencils. If someone wants to use a limited palette, or just add the primaries to their color collection, the question arises, which match the true primaries best? Unfortunately, it is very hard, if not impossible, to find paint or pencil or pastel colors that exactly match the true primaries, especially with how limited the amount of colors being sold are. And not all blues or yellows or magentas are created equal. Some yellows will have a touch of magenta in them, resulting in duller greens. Some magentas will have a touch of blue, and will thus be more of a magenta purple than true magenta. That slight amount of blue will result in slightly duller reds, oranges, pinks, and peaches. Other magentas are just red. This magenta is more red than this primary red. Usually, you shouldn't trust the color label. Not only can they be wrong, like with that magenta, but also some brands may have a paint of the same name that's actually a different color. It's best to always look directly at the paint or pencil color instead. As for picking out good primaries, the best way to test how close a color is to a true primary is to mix it with another primary and see how dark the secondaries and tertiaries are or how dull their tints are. The less dark or dull, the closer the primaries are to being true. I went and tested some different acrylic paints to find the best primaries I could. For blue, it didn't take much. I already had this Liquitex Basics primary blue that turned out to be really nice and worked great. For yellow, I tested Master's Touch Fluorescent Yellow and Master's Touch Lemon Yellow. The lemon yellow made slightly duller greens and cyans, but both worked pretty well, and the difference when it came to the oranges and reds was quite negligible. Personally, I kind of liked the lemon yellow better as the fluorescent yellow was a bit annoying to work with. Then I tested some magentas and also reds to compare. With reds and oranges, Liquitex Basics Quinacridone Magenta was a little on the darker and duller side. On the other hand, there was barely any difference between the oranges and reds made with the artist's loft rose compared to the actual reds. As for Liquitex Basics fluorescent pink, there was no comparison. The oranges and pinks and peaches were so gorgeous and bright, almost too bright. Unfortunately, it wasn't really possible to get a good red though. When it came to purples, the fluorescent pink was also good. This time there wasn't such a stark difference between the fluorescent pink and the quinacridone magenta and rose. Both of them also made pretty decent purples and the reds of course did not. The primary red seemed to be slightly on the magenta side, like a magenta red, so some purplish colors were possible, but they were very dull, and the redder reds made nice dark reds and blues along with a decent black and some nice grays. Personally, I like limited palettes when it comes to paint, so if I were to pick the colors for my palette, they would be primary blue, lemon yellow, and rose, along with black and white. As for colored pencils, Prismacolor Copenhagen Blue is a decent blue, and Prismacolor Magenta is a decent magenta. As for yellow, Prismacolor Lemon Yellow, Neon Yellow, and Canary Yellow work well. The Lemon Yellow makes pretty nice green, cyan, oranges, and decent reds. The Canary Yellow does make fairly dull greens and cyans, but on the other hand it makes the most vibrant reds of the three. The Neon Yellow makes the brightest greens and cyans, and decent oranges and reds, though it also doesn't blend that well, which is why I don't personally use it. Of course, these only cover the mediums and brands I have experience with. 
off the times, simply seeing the color and how close it looks to what the primary should look like should work for choosing decent colors. And there's also the way to test primaries I mentioned earlier, which should work for most mediums. And if it's not possible to find a great primary match for certain mediums or brands, there's nothing wrong with using more than one primary color to make up for what the other lacks. Also, when choosing colors, a lot can fall to preference and how much brightness you want to be able to get or how much dullness you're willing to put up with. It might not be possible to find exact matches, but finding colors that are similar will still get you a very great range of colors. I hope this video was helpful. Thanks for watching, and till next time, bye!